What were they thinking when they implemented the Luxury Ball in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald? For the average player, you will find one, one Luxury Ball throughout your entire journey through Hoenn. There are other places to find them, but they are few and far between. The problem with the scarcity of this Pokeball is that it is only as strong as a regular Pokeball. You know, the thing that Wurmples will sometimes break out of? I had the misfortune of having my Luxury Ball break the first time I played Emerald. I was young, didn't know how rare they were, and didn't save before using it. This was only a problem in Generation 3, as in Generation 4, you can finally purchase a Luxury Ball ball in shops. The luxury ball's rarity in Generation 3 always baffled me, but I think I may have realized the real reason why Game Freak designed it this way, and I actually think there's something really magical about the luxury ball. I've even come up with an insane challenge that will boggle the mind of even the most patient shiny hunter. I call it the Luxury Ball Challenge. In order to understand the extent of the Luxury Ball Challenge, Let's start at the beginning. How do we get the Luxury Ball? So, what's so special about the Luxury Ball? Generation 3 introduced many new Pokeballs, and all the new Pokeballs can be bought at certain shops around the Hoenn region. All except two, the Premier Ball and the Luxury Ball. The Premier Ball is given out if you buy 10 regular Pokeballs at once, so it's easily obtainable in larger quantities. The Luxury Ball, on the other hand, has very few ways of being obtained in Generation 3, as it's not sold in any shops, you find one luxury ball on the ground of the abandoned ship, which is a location that is already a little off the regular beaten path of the game. However, there are some other ways to get the luxury ball in Gen 3, all of which far more difficult. A repeatable way of obtaining a luxury ball is to win a master rank contest. If you've already received a master rank ribbon and win a contest with that same Pokemon, you will be rewarded a luxury ball instead of another ribbon. I could make an entire video on the deep mechanics of Pokemon contests, but to avoid a massive tangent, I'll just say it takes a lot of time and effort to get a Pokemon to this point. Once you've done the work in the contest hall to get a Pokemon to the state where it consistently wins a master rank contest, you'll be able to get luxury balls relatively quickly. It's still by far the hardest Pokeball to obtain a lot of, besides the master ball of course, as even this method revolves around grinding and grinding away. Another way to obtain luxury balls is through someone called the Lily Cove City Quiz Lady, who I did not know existed until I looked up luxury ball methods of acquisition on Bulbapedia. So apparently in the Lily Cove City Pokemon Center, there are one of three ladies who spawn depending on the last digit of your trainer ID. The Quiz Lady asks you one of 16 random questions, giving you a 1 in 16 chance of getting the quiz you want. The quiz lady will almost never actually give you the luxury ball because she only asks one of the questions. And if you don't get the luxury ball one, you're out of luck. I don't know why Game Freak even implemented this nonsense. There's also this other strange way to possibly receive a luxury ball in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. This character named Lady Selfie is lost in a cave and if you find her, she asks for a Pokemon to see. Show it to her and she will give you a luxury ball. Maybe. There's actually a 30% chance she won't even give you a luxury ball. Also, in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, there's one luxury ball on the ground of the shipwreck SS Libra. This is similar to its appearance in Hoenn as it just appears on the ground of the ship and you only get one. So let's say you go through a lot of time and effort and maybe get yourself a few luxury balls. Now what? What does the luxury ball even do and why is it so exclusive? The Luxury Ball is the only Pokeball in Gen 3 that affects a Pokemon after it is captured. Any Pokemon that resides in a Luxury Ball will have its friendship grow twice as fast. While this can be a useful effect, it is not so useful that it warrants the insane rarity of this item. Friendship does a few things gameplay-wise, but the main two things it does is raise the power of the attack to return and cause some Pokemon to evolve. As for the move Return, there's actually a lot of Pokemon that 
can benefit from that, which does make them good luxury ball candidates. When a Pokemon has maximum friendship, Return is a 102 power normal type move, around on par with Earthquake. There are also many Pokemon that evolve based on friendship. There is only one friendship evolution Pokemon that can be caught in the luxury ball, Golbat. Crobat is a great team member, and Golbats appear in some of the later game caves after you get the luxury ball. An average player could save and soft reset to try their one luxury ball on a Golbat that will then evolve much faster. Every other friendship evolution is a gift Pokemon or exclusive to breeding, and thus can only be obtained in Pokeballs. There is one exception Sort of. Chansey. But not in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Chansey in that game can only be caught in a Safari Ball. You can catch a Chansey in a Luxury Ball in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness on the Sit Dark Isle. There's a trainer there that has a Shadow Chansey and you can snag it from him. So that's all the Luxury Ball can do gameplay wise. Make it a little easier to get full power on one attack and make it easier to evolve two Pokemon, one of which is extremely obscure. But maybe it's not about what the luxury ball does. Maybe it's about what it is. It's no secret that Pokemon loves the idea of having super rare, but ultimately meaningless little details. I mean, look at how many people will spend hours or even days of their lives shiny hunting. I think the luxury ball was originally meant to be like that, a crazy rare little holy grail for you to show off to your friends. After all, the item is treated as this high class object being found on nice ships given as a gift from the contest hall, and from a lady who literally has her Pokemon hold gold nuggets. Like, gold nuggets don't even do anything when your Pokemon hold them. This lady is just flaunting her wealth at any trainer who happens to know the attack thief. So, Game Freak, let's take your challenge to the fullest. What is the most challenging Pokemon to capture in the elusive luxury ball? Statistically speaking, the hardest Pokemon to get in a Luxury Ball would be just about any shiny legendary Pokemon. Catching a legendary Pokemon in a Pokeball is no small achievement, but catching a shiny legendary Pokemon in the rarest Pokeball, which is just as unlikely to catch as a standard Pokeball, is a, no pun intended, legendary achievement. The legendary Pokemon I want to challenge you with catching is the elusive Black Rayquaza. Not just because it would be extremely difficult, but because of the color coordination. So what would it take to get yourself a shiny Rayquaza in a luxury ball? First off, you're gonna want to get as many luxury balls as possible. I would ignore Kanto's and XD's luxury balls unless you already got them in those games, as they will be far too much effort to get compared to just farming the contest hall until you get yourself enough luxury balls for the job. So, how many luxury balls will that be? I'd say you only need about 100 luxury balls, maybe 150 to be on the safe side. So get ready to take part in a lot of contests. Most likely Rayquaza isn't gonna struggle knock itself out. Your biggest fear is outrage confusion. After Rayquaza uses outrage two or three times in a row, it will become confused and may damage itself. Because of this, you never want to put Rayquaza in red health since the confusion damage is enough to knock it out at that range. You'll want it to be asleep for as long as possible. My first thought was to use Spore Breloom. While that seems like a great way to put Rayquaza to sleep, don't forget about Effect Spore, which possibly will inflict poison. Your best bet is a nice bulky Snorlax with Yawn. In fact, just get a team of level 100 Snorlaxes and yawn away. Attach leftovers for some self-healing and you'll be able to throw tons of balls at Rayquaza. Weakening is too risky because of critical hits and possible confusion damage. You want to just brute force luxury balls at the sleeping giant until one finally works. The Snorlax strategy is the one I think will work best, but let me know in the comments if you've got a better strategy. I like thinking of challenges like these because I personally would never do them. What? You think I actually found a shiny Rayquaza to get footage for this video? How much free time do you think I have? I used a Game Shark code. 
If I attempted this, I would have to quit making videos and just dedicate my life to getting this Rayquaza. So I'm going to have to bow out of the challenge in hopes that another classy trainer will take up the mantle. If there are any shiny hunters out there that actually succeed in getting the fanciest Rayquaza ever, please send me the video. You'll truly go down as the John D. Rockefeller of Pokemon trainers. And once you do, make sure to have your Rayquaza hold a gold nugget so you can show Lady Selfie that there's an even higher class trainer out there. Hey, if you like this video on one ridiculous to get item, maybe you'd like to hear about another item with a wacky method to obtain, the pretty table. Just click on the video on the right. Or if you want to hear my thoughts on Pokemon TCG Pocket, check out this video on the left. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.